Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Overview of Catholic Church History. Discover the amazing story of the Church together as a family as you color and paste your way through the timeline and printables, which you can find on our website. And now, let's move into our topic for today. Hello, I'm Mr. Charity, and welcome to the Glorious Heritage Catholic History video series. Today's topic is number 45, Pope St. Leo the Great. If you look on your timeline and summary question sheets, you'll notice that we are in the orange time period, which we have named Establishment. If you don't have a timeline or summary question sheets, you can find them on our website. Some days are better than others, don't you think? Sometimes everything seems to go smoothly, and other times everything seems to be a struggle. Well, the history of the church is similar to that. There are some periods in church history that were much harder than others. But God always gave his church extra graces to overcome those difficult times. One example is in the mid-400s, when Pope St. Leo the Great was a supreme pontiff, the head of the Catholic Church. He lived in Rome, at a time when the Western Roman Empire was on the verge of collapse. You may recall that the Western Roman Empire fell in 476, and the barbarians took over after that. Pope St. Leo the Great died just before this happened. You know, you can compare the Western Roman Empire to a car that's breaking down. It doesn't happen all at once, but gradually. The car starts to act weird. It makes strange noises. It slows down or it, it can't go as far. Then after a while, it just stops working and it won't start again. Well, that's what happened to the Roman Empire. It was slowly falling apart in the decades before it collapsed. And that was the time when Pope St. Leo the Great ruled the church. He had a very difficult job of being the Pope and also trying to keep the Roman Empire together. He did this by reaching out to the barbarian kings and influential Romans. He acted as a peacekeeper once between two Roman generals who were at war with each other. He also wrote letters to the barbarian kings to convert them to the faith. He defended the church against heresies, and he also promoted something very important called papal supremacy. Now let me explain what that means. Do you remember in the Gospels when our Lord told St. Peter, He who hears you, hears me. Well, St. Peter was the first pope, and our Lord said that when we hear St. Peter speak, our Lord speaks through him. Since Christ is God, and the Pope was the highest authority, therefore, on the earth. No one is above him except God himself. Well, and that's what papal supremacy means. Well, Pope St. Leo the Great worked hard to teach people about this, because many people, especially in the Byzantine Empire, didn't think that the Pope was special. They thought he was just another bishop. Pope St. Leo the Great also fought hard against the heresy of monophysitism, which denied that Christ has two distinct natures. He wrote a very important letter called the Tome of Leo, and it taught the truth about Christ and his two distinct natures. Christ was human and divine. There is one more important story that I want to share with you. It involves a fierce and powerful barbarian named Attila the Hun. Attila was the terror of the Romans. He came from far away, and his army of Huns killed and stole and destroyed everything in their path. Attila wanted to go to Rome, because he knew there was a lot of treasures there. He marched his army towards Rome, but before he got there, he met Pope St. Leo the Great. This humble and holy Pope went out to meet him, without any armies, but only his two servants. There they stood, the fierce barbarian Attila and the meek and holy Pope St. Leo the Great. Then, something amazing happened. Because against all odds, Attila, he decided to turn around and not attack Rome. Well, why did that happen? What did Pope St. Leo the Great say to Attila? The story goes that St. Peter and St. Paul appeared beside Pope St. Leo the Great and told Attila about his eternal punishments, which scared Attila so much that he fled away and Rome was saved. 
Well, at least for a little while. Okay, here's Mrs. Charity to tell you about papal supremacy and the papal tiara. Hello, I am Mrs. Charity. You just heard Mr. Charity explaining papal supremacy. This means that the Pope has the highest authority of anyone on earth. The Pope wore a special crown called the Papal Tiara. This crown actually had three crowns on it. These crowns symbolize the three functions of the Pope. The top crown is because the Pope is the universal pastor. This means he is responsible to guide Christians to heaven. The second crown is because he is the universal judge of the earth. This means that his authority to make religious laws, the liturgy, prayers, indulgences, all of these things fall under his authority and he makes the final decisions. The third crown is for a universal temporal authority. This means that not only does the Pope have authority over the whole church, but he also has authority over matters of the world, such as governments, kings, and all such things. These three crowns together convey papal supremacy. Welcome back. I have a short story for you today about the famous meeting between Attila the Hun and Pope St. Leo the Great. The year was 452. The city of Rome was under siege by the barbarian army of Attila the Hun, the scourge of God's people. The emperor Valentinian III had fled leaving the fate of the Eternal City in the hands of the Pope. Pope St. Leo the Great decided to meet Attila and to persuade him to spare Rome from destruction. He rode out of the city with a small delegation of bishops and nobles, hoping to appeal to the Huns' mercy and reason. As he approached the enemy camp, he saw the fearsome figure of Attila, mounted on a black horse and surrounded by his fierce warriors. He wore a crown of iron and a cloak of fur, and his eyes burned with savage fire. Pope St. Leo the Great dismounted and walked towards him, holding a cross in his hand. He spoke with a calm and dignified voice, invoking the name of Christ and the authority of the apostles. He asked Attila to spare the city of Rome, the seat of Christian faith, and the legacy of the Roman Empire. Attila listened to him with a cold and scornful expression. He mocked the Pope's words and the weakness of the Romans. He said that he had no fear of Christ or the Apostles, and that he was the true master of the world. He said that he would not stop until he had sacked and burned Rome and enslaved all its people. But as he spoke, Attila saw a vision of St. Peter and St. Paul. Attila's face betrayed his fear and astonishment. He no longer was arrogant and scornful, but was afraid and astonished. Attila understood that horrible things would happen if he sacked Rome. Pope St. Leo the Great was aware of the saints who were helping him. He turned to Attila and repeated the words of the apostles. He warned him of the divine punishment that awaited him if he persisted in his wickedness. Attila was startled and frightened. He looked up and saw the vision of the apostles, shining with heavenly light. He felt a chill in his heart and a tremor in his limbs. He realized that he could not defy the powers of heaven. He lowered his head and agreed to make peace with the Pope. He ordered his army to withdraw from the Roman territory and to return to their homeland. He gave back the captives and the spoils that he had taken, and he renounced his claim to the city. Pope St. Leo the Great thanked God and the saints for their intervention, and he blessed Attila and his people and prayed for their conversion. He returned to Rome with joy and gratitude and was hailed as the savior of the city and the church. Well, thanks for being with us today. Next time, we're going to go to Ireland and talk about the Viking raids. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. Visit our website, www.GloriousHeritageCartoons.com, where you can find more educational supplements, cartoons, books, and printables. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to get notified of our latest updates and videos. And if you like our work and want to support us, you can make a donation on our website or on Patreon. We really appreciate your generosity and kindness. Please, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, 
and see you next time.